we've been talking about the uh, happenings in the Nigerian Republic, of course, since the coup and the ousting, so to speak, of President Bazoum. Now the coup leaders are in power, and so much has happened since uh, July the 25th or thereabout uh, when the coup occurred in uh, Niger. And now we have heard a latest line of action by the ECOWAS uh, community of um, West African states, of uh, the economic community of West African states, of which Niger is um, included. Uh, but now with this uh, latest um, happenings there, uh, sanctions are in place, and the uh, ECOWAS uh, coalition is also talking about a standby uh, military force uh, that will strike. Of course, all options are also set to be on the table with um, negotiations part of it. Dalendi Nomoro is here uh, in the studio to give perspectives on, you know, all that has gone down so far. And we also have Chukso Awoko, who is here with us again to share insight. And then, Chuk, so much has happened uh, yes. you know, since the last time you came here. Of course, you, you had a message, too, for ECOWAS, mm -hmm. you know, at, at the time. And now with this latest stance and listening to uh, your co-analyst, um, yeah. to what extent do you agree with him? I agree with him. Completely excellent. Um, when I got this uh, uh, very invitation, I, I, I didn't have to make our time to listen to local news to find out what the position, especially as ECOWAS was going to meet yesterday. Mm. So, so I listened to what the president had to say. I listened as they read out the um, direction that they want to take. But I think that what was also missing is that I didn't see any idealization. Idealization is what, what I call long-time perspective in West Africa. What is long-time perspective? Giving a deep inner debate or thought of what is going to be the consequences of this planned action. So when I walked into the studio, you observed that I brought these two books. This is Stephen Alcove's Third Alternative. And this is the Black Hawk Down. Now, Black Hawk Down is the summary of what happened in, Som in Somalia in, uh, you know, in when, when the place was invaded and all that. And this provides an alternative to what is going on. So readers are leaders. I just thought maybe like you have in White House, in Hasselhoff you have library where our leaders can go make research. What you're about to do, eh? there's an alternative. And I think they've started working with that alternative now, wanting to pursue diplomacy and what have you. And, and Mr. Morrow has sufficiently explained that. But like I said, there's still an absence of idealization. Idealization is you want to bring war to West Africa because some misguided fellows overthrew a civilian government. Is that not it? What is going to happen after that when you eventually, because like Mr. Morrow said, these guys are not backing that because you cannot, people don't easily give up power. I don't know in any place where people easily give up power. I don't know in any continent where people easily give up power. Maybe in some part of Europe, when people are pressurized, they resign and all that. But it's not a popular event in, in Africa. For me, I came to show you this because in every organization, including in this organization, you can have conflicts. In a, in a man-woman relationship, you have conflicts. And in all conflicts that you have, there are always two sides to it. But what this man tries to tell us is that there's a, a third alternative. And that third alternative you must pursue. And I'm happy that a few Nigerian uh, elites um, have had to visit Niger. And a lot of people are appealing to the president. That, that he was so quick to say that the place will be invaded. Do you understand? No matter how misguided those guys are, they are neighbors. They are brothers. You don't invade your brother's house because you have a conflict with him. You will engage him, pressurize him. There are many other thought alternatives that can be deployed to get these guys to eventually give up power. And, and to show you how the human will is, while you are threatening them and making this arrangement, they've considered a, a ministerial uh, cabinet. cabinet. That's the human nature that I was talking about the last time I was here. You, you can threaten them. Now, why did I bring a hawk down? The Somalians, Haggard, uh, AK-47, Totten, whatever, brought the American hawk down. That's the idea of the hawk down. And maybe you are not aware of what happened in Somalia that year. Americans lost 30 soldiers. They lost their naval officers. 
and they were dragged in the street of Magadishu, in the front of television, global television. So might is no longer strength in modern day warfare or whatever it is that you're doing. And I want to advise our people respectfully that they must read, because if you have read Malcolm Gladwell's book, David and Goliath, he explains this thing. Might is no longer power in modern, in modern, in modern warfare, or in modern business, in modern enterprises. Small has become big. And I think that's the path they need to, to, to walk, the path of peace, the path of thinking, long-time thinking, long-time perspective. There's no alternative to long-time perspective, giving, giving thought to what you want to do. Because after the war, how are we going to live here in West Africa? You can't bring this upon the people, engage these people in this dialogue. That is for the as third long, alternative. Yes. That is the third alternative. That's the, that's the third alternative. As long as it takes. Because they are not aliens in that country. That they are wearing uniform does not reduce them to being aliens in their own country. And you know, when we are listening to the, your documentary, they mentioned about the ECOWAS um, protocol. I was signed in 1999. One of the ways of resolving this problem is to tell your colleagues who are presidents to be law abiding, to listen to the judiciary, to obey law of the courts, and to govern the people and serve only two terms. That also is a third alternative than bringing a whole region into whatever. Nigeria has, we haven't even finished dealing with our internal distractions and crisis, and we're getting involved in this. For me, it's a distraction for our president, and it should, be, it should be guided because there are enemies on the sideline who want this type of thing to happen in Nigeria, and we don't want it, and we don't want it with our neighbor. Even if we want to go to war, not with the Nigerian Republic, even if we want to invade any place, they are too close. You don't, you don't spite your nose for any reason. They are too close to us. So I, I think that the part of peace must be pursued by them, and, and we must learn how to stoop to conquer. That they are small, they, they might not have a, you know, great military and you are bringing all these forces against them. It doesn't mean that you are likely going to win this thing. It doesn't mean. All right. Mr. Moru, that's um, you know, till the end of um, Chuksu Woko's analysis is, is what I want to take you up on. And you know, some people have shared and uh, those concerns too. Uh, yes, his point is that they are small, uh, poor doesn't mean that you know they are weaker and of course we know the assistance uh, the nigeria nation is um, doing in terms of the refugees from nigeria you know over there uh, but then in addition to this and of particular uh, concern is so who will make up this force if and when they they, they do strongly consider it or vote as you say uh, in favor of this uh, what's the capa capability of, of of this standby force the the ECOWAS has um, what is called the Committee of Chiefs of uh, Defense Staff. Um, they've been notified yesterday. That committee has been notified, which meant that all the chiefs of defense staff in various ECOWAS countries will contribute forces, you know, military men to that uh, 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 body that stand force to constitute that stand force. As we speak now, they talked about activating it. It meant that it is not on ground right now. It's not a permanent thing. You know, it's, uh, it comes up when the need arose. Now the need is arising, and they are saying that, OK, you chiefs of defense staff, uh, I think they have a base in Nigeria. They have one again in uh, one other country, Senegal or so. I can't remember precisely now, but I know they have in Nigeria. You know, so the, the member countries now, will be the ones to bring in uh, military men, just like we had in Ekumog, you know, some time ago. And then they will wait for, uh, <laughs> they have about 300 uh, 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 command units. You know, that troop will be about between, uh, I think, 6,500 uh, 6, to 10,000 men, you know, and then equipment will also go with them, just like we've had in the past. But whether Niger is small or not, Niger is an interest country. Interest country to ECOWAS, interest country to America, interest country to France, interest country to Russia. 
They have uranium. And they about the fourth largest producer of uranium. So they have a large deposit of it, which meant that even the superpowers will be interested, even China will be interested in what is going on there right now. It's not about the smallness of Nigeria. It's not about our relationship, our bilateral, the bilateral relationship between Nigeria and Nigeria now. It's about the interest. That even ECOWAS has. Why are countries interested in what is happening in Nigeria? Why were these same countries like America not interested in what happened in Liberia? These are food for thought. These are some of the questions people should be asking. Liberia was ravaged so much. Nigeria lost men. Nigeria lost money. Nigeria lost resources. Where were the international committee? The Americans and co. You see, war, things like this, they are about interest. In international relations, some of these countries, particularly in the West and America, the first question they ask themselves is, what would they gain? Nigeria has never asked itself, what would we gain? For eventual, we commit our financial resources and our men. Nigeria partook in, 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 in what happened in South Africa. How were we paid back? Nigeria partook in Liberia. Nigeria partook in Syria alone and some other places. What, would, what did we get? We lost men. We lost resources. What did we recoup? Some of the countries abroad will be going into things like this, perhaps when, it's, when, when it suits their interest. It's either they want to self uh, 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 small arms and light weapons. He said that they want to rebuild that nation after they have been ravaged by war. Was any Nigerian construction company involved in the rebuilding of Liberia or Syria alone to recoup what the country lost? The answer is no. And now interest, people are speaking uh, African, Afri other African nations are talking, some are saying yes, some are saying no, some are saying we must do this, some are saying, Mr. but Mr. President has consistently told the line. It's just one man, and it's just the chairman, and has just one vote, but he has a lot of influence on, its, on the other members of ECOWAS. And so, Particularly when the likes of Sanusi had a private meeting with him, Sanusi was about the only out of the delegation of, from, from ECOWAS that was able to meet with the leadership of that right. coup. Even the U.S. contingent. They were sent back. Right. And so, you see, to the glory of God, we have a situation on hand that is delicate. At the same time, we also have a man in the hands of affairs who is listening to the outcry, more of the damages it could cause us as, as a country. We're going to lose resources. We might lose men. Because, of course, if you want to, if, 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 you, if you have the, the standby force, Nigeria will contribute to the largest. Nigeria will contribute more men, military, more, uh, more, more, more finance. At this time, when we have a president who is trying to regrow the economy, who is trying to stabilize in Nigeria, particularly from what we have been suffering. And so I, do not, I don't want to see it from the size. People are talking about the military might of Niger. People are talking about the strength of their military. People are talking about the strength of their, of their equipment. Of course, if it's a one-on-one -on -one issue, that demands that Nigeria should go to war with Niger. Just three Tucanos are good enough to level Niger. Just three Tucanos. And they don't, need, they don't need a military base outside Nigeria to take off from because we share a common border with Niger. They take off from here and do the leveling. But that is not what we want at this point in time.
And to the glory of God, we have the chairman, who is a Nigerian president, who is also maintaining that, of course, eventually, military, military leadership anywhere in the world is no longer a fashion. All right, I'll come back to you, you know, to get uh, some more of, of your thoughts on, on, on this. Now, it's, it's getting really interesting, and I, I want to hear uh, Chuk Sun Woko's take, especially on the issue of interests. Uh, of course, they, they, they're homegrown interests. Even the soldiers would definitely, would definitely have interest on the matter, which may have pushed, um, you know, the, the uh, bid. Of course, there's the issue about interests, uh, um, interests of ECOWAS block, and not even talk, forgetting the international community. And, you know, already there has been talk about the involvement or the wise of Russia, especially the, the Wagner group. But w what's your take on all this? What, what possible interest would Nigeria or any of these West African countries have in Niger? Mm -hmm. We're not into manufacturing, so to say, if I may say so. We're not really like an innovation quote, uh, you know, innovation, hub, innovation that, hub yes. or whatever in, in West Africa. Like you rightly said, it's these Western powers who extract all these uh, resources. I told you the last time I came here to go and investigate what, I, what is used in making telephones that you and I use. So it's, it's, it's right. It's about interest. When they are not interested in your resources, when they are not interested in your cheap stock that we sell, so our, 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 our local stocks of, of poor African countries, because their people are here. They live, they, they have all these funds that are floating around. The, the, the coast of Spain and, 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 and in Hollywood, people who are amassed so much wealth. So these lawyers that you have in, in Wall Street in New York, they have, they have connections. They bring this money, they trade in our stocks and all that. It's, it's their, their collective interest. That's, that is, why will a lock, why will a lock, um, landlocked. a landlocked nation like Niger be of interest to whatever, to, to Westerners? It's the mineral resources. Their relationship with us is about our oil. In fact, right now they steal our oil. They don't even need us to sell or negotiate with them. They take our resources. Then they brainwash us. They change our way of life. See the way our children are misbehaving. You are, my generation, at the time we were speaking uh, English that is not British because they have used the media to colonize us. I was telling you, Mike was saying that, um, talking about colonization, and I told him, right now we're being recolonized. Our mentality and everything. So it's, it's about this thing they are pushing. Were we not here when they came here and told us it was wrong for us to make laws for ourselves concerning how that a woman is best for me and not a man? How that that is even a pain, the reason why Obama will not humble himself come to this place. And tell him to tell us. So it's the same mentality that they have. We're talking about mineral resources. Do you know what they do with cheap, our cheap stocks that we don't see? And you have some of our people, who, who journalists, who don't understand what is going on. And writing, constantly writing about Nigeria in very negative forms. And we're writing about Nigeria Republic, writing about ourselves in Africa. When the man, Sisi, in Egypt, became, became a military head of state in Egypt, did you hear the Americans say one word? Now he has muted to what he is today. So it's about interest. When it was convenient, they allowed him. You know how many people that are in prison in Egypt? How many journalists that are in prison in Egypt? Have you ever heard them, you know, ask for the release of those journalists? Because they have personal interest of what is going, security interest of what is going on in that region, and which I, I appreciate. And amid this interest, uh, apologies for the interruption, I just, I just I wanted to build up on, on your point so far. Amid this interest that you both have established, what do you make of the sentiments within, you know, nations, African nations, in Niger that is in focus now, there is the anti-France, pro-Russia movement that appears to be brewing. Where do you lay this in your argument? Be, be, because when the black man in France goes to work World Cup or go to European Championship and plays and they win and they carry World Cup and they become winners, the black man in the team is called a French black man or black French man. But when... Um, when, when a child wants to fall up from a 10th floor, a 20, uh, 20th floor of a tall building, and a black man becomes a bat and goes to bring down that child, he's given a, given a national or he's given, given an employment. But when a crime is committed, 
he is seen as an African. So they, the people in, in Nigeria and other Afri African, uh, African folk countries who have come to the realization that assimilation was just to harvest their brains, they are rising up and looking elsewhere for, for cooperation and partnership, looking at Russia and looking at China. They have harvested our, our, our people and continue to enslave us. Mike also talked about our enslavement. And I told him, so you, in your mind, you think that slave trade has, has ended. It hasn't ended. So the African nations should not play, ECOWAS should not play into the hands of these people by allowing them to come and give us money to finance this war. We just began to make uh, gains from the subsidy remover. Maybe they, that's, that is the money that our, people, our, our government is going to contribute to, to this, and then we're going to lose lives. We don't even need the crisis in West Africa. We don't even need Nigeria to be distracted at this point in time. We don't need anybody to come and tell us how we can relate. By the way, we have lived here in centuries before the colonial masters came, um, how many centuries ago, to come and tell us how to uh, talk to us about education, about religion, and all that. Fine, the education, we have acquired it, now we dress and speak like them. But I think there's a limit to everything. They should leave us alone. We can take it from here and develop ourselves. And it is truth. Let us live um, like brothers. I don't want to say anything against democracy so that you won't look like I'm supporting me too. I am not. But I'm saying that to checkmate these people, we must make our democracy inclusive. Mm. Myself and Mr. Moru have been removed completely. If not, if not our generations have been removed from the Nigerian democratic process forever. Because we cannot have, never afford 100 million naira to go and buy form to contest presidency. So is this group of people who have served as ministers, who have served as governors, that have come to serve as uh, ministers again? This is recycling. That is the, the bane of the democratic process in Nigeria. Right. These people are living life. So I believe that these people should be negotiated. And after negotiating with them, we will now eventually restore this one as president. It should be told right. that the best way to keep these guys at bay is to take care of your people. Find out how you can use the uranium in your, in your, in your country to bring innovation, to begin to... What does it take to make a phone at that governmental level? Why can't they bring the factories here? Those factories... Can't we go to Korea and go to uh, uh, China, bring those factories here, have us to make the phone here? Eight years that Buhari was president, and I kept thinking that he will read Ling Kuan Yu and follow and emulate that model where you can go and bring companies and give them land, give them tax freedom, give them all that they need. That way, why will any man in the military who is supposed to be guiding the, the security of his people and nation be going to administration? He's not trained for that kind of thing. So that is the way I think that we should go and keep these people who are coming here to harvest our brain, our resources, out of whatever. And by the way, remember what I said to you. Check the funds that are coming into this country, that they invest here. We don't need them anymore. We have had enough. Our children are schooling in that place. When they graduate, let them come back. Or if possible, let them take over the economy. But we're tired of their inter interference in our lives. And, and what, what is it? Let them, they are paying the price of civilization because they, if you go out there, you'll see they have, they have harvested and used up their resources. All right. Uh, well, gentlemen, I, Mr. Omoro, you will uh, have an opportunity to respond uh, to this because, you know, something interesting appears to be to, to play out. You may not be surprised, though. While, yes, there is a chunk of um, Nigerians who are in support of the coup, uh, there is also a... They're not in support of the coup. People just reacting to change. All right. But, but, but if you look at it now, it, I, I think it's about semantics. <laughs> I think it's more about semantics. But no, it's normal. Uh, definitely, yes. everybody in Niger wouldn't support the coup. And interestingly, there is a, a group now. There is a group being led by a, a former by a former yes. Tuareg leader yes. who is saying he yes. will do um, everything yes. at all costs to ensure yes. that President Because Bazoum he was and, a part of that other government. He was brought into that government as through, well. Uh, through uh, Bazoum. So, but yes. what do you make of the dynamics now? And of course, there's the Russian involvement, even though they've already um, stated their position so far. But then the, the, the sentiment about you know people on the ground, some people on the ground, you know, who even want uh, the, the Russian, for example, the Russian nation to come into their country. What do you make of all these dynamics? How does it play out? Interest. To you? 
But in the first instance, before I answer that question uh, completely, he asked the question, he said, what's the, what's the interest, interest of uh, ECOWAS? Uh, well, there's an interest. The interest of ECOWAS is simple. You know, let's not lose uh, that fact. The fact of ECOWAS is that military in power must not be encouraged. Because if you encourage it and military begin to come up again, in, uh, uh, rise up in some of these countries and they are not checkmated or stopped, it will go round. It will definitely go round. Let's not lose sight of that. And military in, in governance, whichever way you want to see it, is an aberration. One of my thesis was military in, 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 in power, OK? And so whichever way we want to look at it, military taking over power in any country would want to sit until another group dislodges them. Another military group dislodges that other one. Otherwise, they have all their equipment to defend what they are doing because they are the ones who are constitutionally bestowed with that authority and equipment to handle equipment. Otherwise, aside from the non-state actors who are doing it illegally, those are the people. A man who is carrying a gun, you have to tread softly when you are, when you are facing him, particularly when you don't have a, a, a firearm on you. Even if you do, once that man has raised his own, you have to, you have to tread with caution. Now, back to the issue. Niger are the same, the same people. Perhaps this uh, military uh, leadership are those who are inviting Russia into this issue. They say they want to discontinue with France. They are colonial Master. masters. And they talked about having been ripped over the years. They talked about France and America. OK? Just like we had in Mali saying they want to disengage from all the policies of assimilation, integration, and what have you with, with France. That is the basic issue. Russia has a crisis on its hand at the moment that they've not been able to contain. Remember, of late, we have the uprising of a group that was immediately countered. If that uprising was not countered by now, we won't be talking about a Putin in Russia anymore. Because Putin applied a lot of wisdom in checkmating the activity of that uprising. Because most of his soldiers were already moving away from his command. But that is not the issue now. Russia is also interested in the resources of Niger. He talked about, people often refer to Niger as a, a landlocked uh, 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 nation. nation. Take them into a hole. As much as they have what will interest these other people who would want to sit on us, all true, who want to continue, they want to, their, their fathers were the slave masters. We have become the slaves of their own children. Our children don't want to continue to enslave our own children by their own. It, their, it has to move from one generation to another. That is the intent. They want to have control over Africa. Africa is one of the largest continents in the world. Africa has all it takes to become a power that must be negotiated with by either the West or America. If they, can, if they could speak in one voice. Currency, military, for instance, Nigeria has the population. Nigeria has all the, all the resources you want to think about that could make this country better than an American country. An America, I stand here, I want anybody to challenge me on that. We have all the resources. But these resources, rather than us, turning them into finished products, we allow or connive with some of these uh, 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 countries abroad to steal them, not even to buy from you. This is what we have suffered over time. This is what the African continent has suffered. What happened to the likes of Gaddafi? What happened to the likes of Mandela? What happened to them? 
We have leaders who have said, as Africa must come together, let's have a common currency, let's have a common economy, let's do things right, and so that other, instead of, why is China interested in Africa? Most countries in Africa have been sold out to China by way of being indebted to China. Are you aware? Most countries have been sold out to some of these Western countries. Again, Niger, they want to pull out from France. They also want to sell out to Russia. All right. So I want to take you back to your earlier point now on, on this burning issue of a possible military solution, uh, quote and unquote. I use the word. Last option. I, I use the word. It's a last option, but it will not be the first time that no, ECOWAS has to this yes. slide. We've seen the reports to also, you know, help, help in our uh, analysis, as, uh, so to speak. But... What would it mean if we break it down? Is it as people out there are calling it? Would it be an all a, a downright war? Or would it be, you know, strategically? Because we've seen now so far, it's obvious that ECOWAS wants to assert its leadership, so to speak. Even Ashu, um, Ashuaju, the, the president of Nigeria, said in his inaugural speech, in his um, Renewed Hope agenda, about the issue of fragile democracy in the region and the need to assert itself. So... What is it looking like to you in a way that it will not be as people are calling it? But from a security analyst perspective, what would a possible military solution be like in Niger? It's not, it's not necessarily, it's not necessarily an, going to be an invasion. It's going to be first like a rescue mission. They, must, they will want to rescue Bazoum, Bazoum. The, the, the president. Yes, they will want to rescue him. If you, if you look at the latest report as at yesterday, Bazoum is already complaining of hunger and, and, and not having uh, a medicals. Of course, he's under house arrest. The first, what is most important to these other heads of state of ECOWAS now is how to get that man out of that place safely. And of course, the, the, the cool leadership is aware. And that's why they are using him as human shield. That's why they would not just want to release him. Because if you release him, then well, if, the, if there has to be an invasion, then it will be easier. But the first thing, and that's why they have also threatened to kill him if you invade, if, you, if, if Echo was invaded, if they go ahead with the last option. It is obvious. It is usual in war, at worst uh, situations. Okay, they want to keep him, they want to use him as an object of negotiation, they may want to also use him as a shield. And why the interest of the leadership of ECOWAS is how to first see how they can get him. That's why they have consistently maintained that he should be released. So all of these are strategic. Okay, and now if by adventure they want to invade, the issue will be how to get the, 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 the leadership of that coup. It might not necessarily be to take them out. Of course, there will be resistance and all of that. But how to see, first, the, 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 the first thing is how to see the possibilities whether they could get them arrested. Okay, but the first option is to get to where uh, Mohammed is and free him. And then the next option will be how to get the leadership of the coup out because Every military man will be taking command right now from the head of state. And so, but eventually, there will be casualties. If that option is taken, the last option, there will be casualties, large casualties, which could also involve civilians. Like we started, like we stated initially when, when, uh, when you asked him, whether everybody, some persons were not really uh, in support. Yes, a majority of Nigerians are in support of the coup because of bad governance they have suffered over time. Of course, right now, some of the, uh, uh, um, what do you call it now, the effect of the sanctions, they are beginning to feel it. Because even where Mohammed is, there's no lie. Nigeria, we don't have enough, but we've been supplying Niger uh, 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 power. power. But we don't have enough here in Nigeria. All right. All right. So, Chooks, uh, your take on this, uh, Chooks and Woko, uh, especially with the bargaining chip now that uh, Mohammed Bazoum seems to represent, and okay, 
uh, people are still, you know, opting for the issue of diplomacy. But with this hard stance of the soldiers, of the Nigerian coup leaders, how do you see peace in the offing? There's always peace. It's just patience that you need. Don't, we, we, but, you know, because you started off um, talking about invasion, we will invade. I thought, I thought that was a quick and error. Uh, it, was, it was a very quick um, utterance that was made in, at the wrong time. You know, like I always say, you're dealing with human beings. You know, human beings, they, they have a will. I'm not to talk of military men that are trained. You know, but there's, there's always an option. There's always a third option. What you can do at this time is what Sanusi and Co have done. Continue to pressurize these guys. Continue to talk to them. Continue to seek after peace. It might take a while. It might take a while. And that is what you're targeting. Because, right. see, the evidence that we're children of God is our approach of peace towards all issues. Evidence that you're a child of God is when you come into a place of conflict or war or whatever, you bring peace to the table. But, but in your experience, how do you see this peace working out? There, well, there are two leaders now. If you, go to, an war, incumbent president if you go to war, you're not going to sit, sit down and talk about peace. Mm. If you ravage that country, like what is going on in Ukraine, you're still going to come down sometime, someday, and talk peace. But we have wisdom now that there's no need to kill, to, to, to allow our people to be killed. We don't need to get our own brothers killed. We don't need to destroy the place like they're doing in Ukraine. Then you start raising money to go and rebuild, and that money is not going to be free. You are still going to repay it. What bank will not bring money? Because that's what they use in holding us in Africa. Always giving us money. Make it look like it's free money. Let's apply wisdom now. These guys, they are just our brothers. Continue to make the effort. We have enough problems here. Ghanaians have enough problem. There's a global economic setback. Let's be wise. Let's, let us show them how it's done. Let's show Americans how it's done. You don't just go and invade Afghanistan or invade Ukraine or invade countries because you're, you have an election coming in less than Even two Even though years. there's the welfare of a president at stake? You can negotiate that. Is it not better to have the welfare of the president and his family at stake than destroying the place? Destruction and loss of life of our people is not on a, an option. There's a third alternative. That is verbalization, making the effort. Because when we do that, we show that we are peaceful people and that we are children of God. That's, that's the fruit that we bear. That peacemaking effort is the fruit that we bear to show that we are children of God. That's the way to go. Right. And I think that Mr. President should throw that line. And I hear there are some Nigerians that are also asking him to right. do that line. Of course, so when we has, succeed, if we work that path. He has, uh, indeed, as President Tinubu has already you know, spoken to that effect of all options on, on the table, including diplomacy and negotiations. Gentlemen, uh, we have run out of time. So many dimensions to this um, you know, controversy. And uh, I just want to say a big thank you uh, to thank you, Chuk Sonwoko. Thank you. And um, you know, thank you very much, Darlene Tinumoru, for your analysis on this burning uh, issue. We hope that when next we come back, we'll have more positive uh, developments. Mm -hmm.